me. You know, some do. I wouldn't mind. I'd love to have a car like Alex Jones has. A, what is it? The Dodge Hellcat or something? And, uh, you know, 800 horsepower or something? I mean, that'd be crazy good. I mean, but you'd need a racetrack to go along with it. You know, and I talk about highway safety sometimes. And, you know, I say, well, you know, people shouldn't drive, you know, like the, the public highways or their own private racetrack. And, you know, Alex Jones was talking about getting his car up to 150 miles an hour on the public highway. And, you know, and I'm not going to condemn that because actually under the basic speed law in California, which is probably the same in Texas, these giant wide open super highways, it's safe to actually go that fast, believe it or not. If you can see five miles ahead, uh, you know, then it, it's, it could be rendered considered safe. So, nevertheless, it would be better, you know, to, to use a vehicle that, that high performance on a, uh, on a racetrack. But, uh, you know, which we could probably use more public racetracks, like a library. A guy wants to blow off some steam, what better way? Go drive a high performance car, you know, get your yayas out, have fun. We should all be able to do that. So, you know, that's where I'm coming from. I don't want to take anything from anybody. In fact, People that are middle class, upper middle class, rich, all I want to do is add to it. You see, but we don't need people being uber wealthy if their hoarding is keeping other people from being halves. <coughs> Especially if they got their money fraudulently or, you know, the rules they were, you know, they benefited somehow because of the lack of rules. It's like here in California, I imagine around the country. You know, I talked about this Jarvis Act. This was a sneaky, you know, real estate market manipulation scheme that goes back decades. I, by insulating, protecting the current, the current uh, uh, group of homeowners from the taxes going up when they started manipulating the real estate market, they said, look, don't worry about your neighbor's house being worth 10 times what yours is worth. Your taxes will stay the same. You get it? Oh, yeah, I get that. I'll go along with that. It protects me, so I'm still paying tax on a house I paid five or ten thousand bucks for in the 60s and now it's you know two thousand something and you know my neighbor's house is worth a million dollars that means my house if I've <coughs> you know done a few improvements <coughs> my house too is worth a million dollars <coughs> and um, <clears throat> great for me you know what a great piggy bank I can go out and use that equity and just use my income stream to pay off any loans I take out and I can drive a new car all the time when I'm paying this property tax, that's, you know, a nominal fee, like returning a late library book or something. But this guy over here, he bought a million dollar house, he's stuck with paying over $10,000 a year on 1% interest. But it's like that, you know what I'm saying? Is that around the country that you've been insulated from the Jarvis Act, Proposition 13. And so it's been a more moderate rise in prices. Now I saw in Nevada, Las Vegas, Nevada, there was two years in a row, and it happened to be a period when I was living down there, about 2001 to 2003. And the pr house, uh, housing prices actually was after the year I left. When they went up two consecutive years in a row, 50% a year. Housing costs went up 50% a year for two years in a row. And if you don't think that's due to a lack of regulation, and market manipulation and price fixing, I've got news for you, it is. It's, it's a lack of rules and regulations. And why should there be rules and regulations when I'm such a free market, supply and demand, uh, capitalist kind of guy? And that's the only kind of capitalism I prescribe to you. Remember, it's got to be pure, which the kind of capitalism we have now is nothing like that. It's crony capitalism, it's fascist capitalism, whatever you want to call it. It's not true capitalism in any way, shape, or form. So I am into regulating essential human needs very strictly to protect the consumer from price gouging. This is, this is market manipulation. This is collusion. This is price fixing. This is different groups that have an interest in jacking up the cost for that commodity and they're taking advantage of the consumer by so doing. Now in California, we had this rent control thing here which did protect to a degree that landlords were, were, were kept from, uh, you know, jacking up their prices really quickly overnight. But it was only in certain counties and cities where they had this problem. They thought it, they perceived this problem that was causing, you know, too much burden on the social welfare system and this sort of thing. 
but they have gradually been lifting it, eroding it, and under the guise that this was anti-capitalistic, that this was anti-free market, that this was a communist socialist program. And I think, my God, these people sicken me. Okay? They, now they, they say, well, you know, we're trying to make it more, cop they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. We're trying to make it more socialistic. We're trying to make it more, you know, Robin Hood-like, taking from the haves and giving to the have-nots. Well, the problem with inequality keeps growing. The poor keep growing. You know, keep, the amount of poverty keeps exploding. We're losing in the middle class. The rich get richer. The wealth disparity keeps growing. And they're saying we're going towards social. If that's socialism, I want nothing to do with it. I never did. I was never deceived into believing it. You can look through history. The, the miserable failure that socialism has brought. Look at France. They're paying everything to taxes. I mean, look at, and, and if, they're so ignorant. It's like these Mark Dice videos. He goes out, people want to ban the Bible from being sold on, on eBay. And in France, what is it, some huge percentage of these people, I mean, it's not half, but, a, you know, a huge percentage support ISIS. It's that can't, same kind of mentality. This widespread ignorance, every, whether it's happening on a subconscious, subliminal, inadvertent level, but people are stupid. They're stupid. They don't understand any history. The ISIS group doesn't understand. If they want to blame Christians, they're way off base, man. Christians have never been opposed to Muslims. Never. And neither have the Jews. If you look into it, Jews, Christians, Muslims, if they're real, they're real. They're all serving the same God. And that God calls us to truth. That God calls us to living together in peace and harmony. To living together in the way he wants us to live together. But there is this synagogue of Satan, even Jesus talked about, that call themselves Jews. And we know that if you're a decent, upright Muslim, you cannot, you cannot condone the behavior of ISIS in their attack against Christianity and Judaism. You can't do it. You can't do it. So, you know, people need to stop being ignorant. You need to learn a little history. You need to say, well, I wasn't taught this in school about the... Well, find it out on your own. Understand the value of, under, of knowing and how, how pernicious, how bad it is for the society at large that you remain ignorant, how you're hurting people. Your ignorance hurts people because you're the ones that complacently, indifferently go along with this system. And by so doing, by conforming to the ever-growing tyranny that we're experiencing... You're a part of it, okay? And you're going to the same place with those hypocrites, okay? Where there's the weeping and gnashing of teeth, where people, when they're, once their riches have rotted and they're so miserable because they just hoarded this great wealth thinking this was their security, this was their happiness, this was what really counted, this was real, this was common sense and pragmatic and practical. They were the smart, wise men of their day, the learned ones that really knew what was treasure and what wasn't. I've amassed a fortune and billions and all this. Nonsense. Okay? Nonsense. They're going to hell. If that's where their heart is, that's where their soul is. Okay? And then you're going to a more painful place. The earth to me is way painful enough. I can't enjoy my life here. And this brings me into this idea of all the ways that we find to punish ourselves because we feel inadequate. We know that something deep down inside is bugging us. Why do you think there's so much drug addiction, so much alcoholism, so much sex addiction, so much gambling addiction, so much addiction to entertainment, so much addiction to food? These are drugs. All of these act as drugs on the mind, okay? God gave us natural drugs in our body. A lot of these are natural drugs that God gave us that we are, we are uh, sparking you know that these drugs we're going to say we've got to escape we've got to escape from our reality we need a fix and that becomes our mindset so it turns into if, if it if it's healthy it's it's a, it's if it's not too unhealthy let's say then it's not too self-destructive but this is where the whole idea i'm going to slip my wrist what what kind of drugs is that spurring adrenaline right well i'm so freaked out man i'm so scared of the tyranny i'm so insecure I just want to drop out, man. I just want to run away. I want to escape. I want to kill myself. Whatever it may be, I need a drug. I need a fix, man. I got to go get laid. I got to, you know, something's got to change here, man, because I can't stand 
the quote reality that's been imposed upon me. I want to run, man. I can't stand it. My landlord's raising my rent. I got to get out of this. I have no other way to make more money. I'm working all I can. There's not enough hours at my job. I can't do it. They've turned to this, and they want you to believe it's got to be like this. And those are the good. Work harder. Do something more. Contend with the system. This is what you should do. This is what a good American does. Find a way. No. This hyper-competitive, dog-eat-dog, rat race is an extension of social Darwinism. This is the way they want you to think. They don't want you to say, well, there's a solution. If there's only X amount of hours available in my community to work where I am, you know, I'm stuck, I'm confined to working within my community, then I've got to say, logically speaking, there's only so many hours, so let's share, if you want to call it pain, and there's not enough work to go around, <laughs> you share the pain of unemployment, okay? So you say, well, wait a minute, I would perish. Uh, you know, then that, that social Darwinism working against me. I'm the strong. i got to survive. I, what, how do I do? They're making us crazy. They're making us so we can't think straight. They love it like that. They love you confused because you're disempowered. You're just not sure. You lack confidence. You can't speak firmly and concisely about these matters. But if you're given the truth and you accept the truth, then you can speak logically and irrefutably about economic issues because they're very simple. But they don't want you to figure it out. That's why they convolute everything. That's why I don't get into a lot of, well, credit default swaps and, and derivatives and this and that. It's all just hokey pokey. It's all just sorcery of another type. Hey, you should have read the fine print, buddy. <laughs> when they're the ones that wrote the fine print. They're thieves. They're criminals. It's open criminality. They've taken all every semblance of ethics away. There's no value. We don't need that stuff. We, we don't need rules and regulations. We just want to amass a fortune. Rape, Rob, we don't care. It's capitalism, man. When it's not, it's the furthest thing from any tr true form of capitalism. Tr true capitalism brings what JFK tried to give us. Huge tax cuts. Okay? How do you explain tax receipts going up after huge tax cuts? Because people don't want to be forced to pay taxes. They don't want to be coerced. They want to pay of their own free will, their own free accord. And what's so radical about the idea of being able to earmark those taxes, whatever you're paying? You say, I don't believe, I don't want to support abortion. I'm not just going to just arbitrarily pay my taxes to, oh, the great tax god. No. No, I'm going to decide where it goes. I want it to go here or there. Or if I don't want it to go to education because I don't like what's being taught. So none of it goes there. You know, where is this, oh, great curriculum god that decides what's important and what's not. Where are these people? Stand up and show your faces. Okay? That's what we need to say. So it, it seems very logical and reasonable to, to me to say you get to earmark where your taxes go. If you're going to pay taxes, and it should be voluntary. And tax receipts would go up when you don't force people to pay. They'll pay more when you don't force it down their throats. At the, you know, you do it or else. You know, here's the implications. Here's the ramifications if you don't pay your taxes. We can make it for sales tax. You don't want to pay because your sales taxes are going to something you don't support. So be it. The taxes will still go up because people are paying it of their own free will. It's like giving a tax, a tip. People pay tips because they love to give tips. They love that feeling of generosity and sharing. People innately, instinctively, intuitively want to be that person. They want to be generous and sharing and giving. But they don't want to be forced to do it. They'll give more when they don't have to be forced. So it's all logical and reasonable. And JFK tried to give a sound currency. He was an egalitarian. He was an equalitarian. He knew that this would cause, you know, a, 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 an extinction of the wealth disparity be, through universal prosperity, through sound currency. And America could have set a shining light example. It would have spread throughout the world. All around the world we could have this. All this suppressed clean technology could be released if money wasn't an issue. All these patents are being held and bought up. You know, because there's money. It's all about the money, right? We can't release this patent that could get us off oil because, well, that's my, my money interest. My fungible asset, my money is the oil, let's say. Whatever it is. My, it's stocks and bonds. These people suffering 
with the with the volatility of the stock market recent up and down. They don't know what to do. It's making people nuts. They're afraid to death. Oh, that's their fear. That's their security. Remember, is in their stock, their pensions, all this kind of stuff. I get it. I get it.